40 million. Yep, I said 40 million. That's a big number. If any of you won that in the lottery, hopefully you'd be happy, because I know I would be. But that's the amount of joint and spine surgeries that happen every year in the United States. 40 million. So how many doctors here in the last year have had someone come into their office saying they need a meniscus surgery on their knee, labrum on their hip, rotator cuff on their shoulder, or even to have a total joint replacement? How many have heard that? All right, so almost everybody. So what I'm about to tell you tonight is about regenerative orthopedics, which will help save your patients from doing that. As he said, my name's Peter Fields, and I practice regenerative orthopedics. That's all I practice. I don't do surgery. I don't do <coughs> steroid shots, cortisone, and I don't do the lubricants. So in the next hour and a half, you'll be hearing about the benefits of regenerative orthopedics so that you can accurately <coughs> tell your patients about it and allow them to make the decision. But believe me, if they do make the decision not to have surgery, they will thank you for the rest of your careers because they walked into your office thinking they needed those surgeries and ended up not having them. So now we'll get on to our lecture here. Uh, I do non-surgical repair with stem cell PRP and prolotherapy. I am located in Santa Monica. Chiropractors can call me all the time. I take the phone calls. There's no problem with that. Um, a little on my credentials, yes, um, I was a chiropractor first, as I, most popular question I get asked is, which one did you do first? And my answer is, there's no MD humble enough to go to chiropractic school, and we all know that. And I actually have more chiropractic licenses than I do medical licenses, you know, keeps me busy and active. Board certified in both of them, and yes, I do some precepting, I still call it LACC, that's where I went to school, they call it this big Southern California University of Health Sciences because the doctors there cannot do what I'm doing, but they need to know about it and understand about it because their patients do want that. So normally I say to chiropractors, you know, if you're treating someone, let's say for your neck or back, and they go away for a week, they go camping, hiking, visiting relatives, and they come back after a week, and you say, how are you feeling? And they go, hey, I'm feeling pretty good. And they say, I need surgery. And you go, on your neck? What are you, crazy? No, no, but I tweaked my knee and it was so bad, they did an MRI, they say I have a torn meniscus or a torn ACL. When I learned at LACC and still exists today, there's not a lot we can do to get it to heal, we can support it. That's where regenerative orthopedics comes in. I can help those patients to heal and help them to avoid surgery. So, this is just a very basic, simple thing. Chiropractors know it inside and out, what cr controls joints, ligaments and tendons. Ligaments go from bone to bone, so they give you stability, and tendons go from muscle to bone, so they give you mobility. And if you affect the mobility and the stability of a joint, you're gonna affect how it functions. What causes the joint problem, okay? And again, patients are gonna be asking you and over and over and you need to understand these cycles because they'll ask you the questions. So they are weak and torn or damaged ligaments and tendons and then you get <coughs> increased pain and pressure, then you get excessive joint motion, then you get more strain, then you get decreased range of motion and then you get arthritic changes. Now by the way, so many patients come in and, or call us and say, do you treat arthritis? And this is Arthritis is ubiquitous and it's come to mean anything, but I mean, arth means joint and itis means inflammation. So any joint inflammation, but they're talking about destructive properties within a joint. But they just hear the word arthritis, arthritis, arthritis. Arthritis is the end product. It is the effect, but it's not the cause of the problem. And we'll go into what exactly are the causes of problem. This next slide is actually one of the most important slides. There's about four or five I'll say on there because your patients will have heard this, and if you know how to address them, even if you're taking care of them chiropractically, it will help you. They have gone usually to an orthopedist. And by the way, many, many patients come in, and obviously the same reason they see you, they're seeing me not to have surgery. And I say, why did you see a surgeon? And they say, I didn't see a surgeon, but it says here you saw this orthopedist. He's a sports doctor. No, that's an orthopedic surgeon. And they go, really? So believe it or not, 
your patients don't think they're going to see a surgeon, a lot of them, when they see an orthopedic surgeon. But they will tell them joint pain, okay, uh, then they'll give them Motrin, Naproxen, Ibuprofen. There's six or seven classes. They have more of that, so they give them stronger ones. And then after that, say, let's get an X-ray. An X-ray leads to cortisone injections, which I'll tell you why that's the worst thing in the world. I was interviewed on Channel 9 TV here. Then they talk, let's have an MRI. Now, an MRI is a roadmap, and it's a roadmap for surgery. So if you're not going to Kansas, you don't need a Kansas State roadmap. Okay, let's be honest here. So there was a study done in the London Times, and every chiropractor should actually have this in their office, that the <coughs> London Times looked at 5,000 MRIs of low backs. And they found that about half of them were abnormal and half of them were normal. Okay, so now they have two divisions, abnormal and normal. In the abnormal ones, they found half the people had pain and half didn't. And you know that, people have weird MRIs, but they're skydiving and jumping and hiking and doing whatever. Now, in the normal MRIs, what do you think they found? The same. Uh, very good, the same, half had pain, half didn't. And you know there are people who have normal MRIs, they call you Tuesday morning, they can't get off the floor. The conclusion, this was a retrospective study, so it looked back. The conclusion of the study was whether you had an abnormality on the MRI or not, was no indication whether you had pain. So you know what? History and physical, history and physical, history and physical. That's how you'll tell them. But anyway, then they do arthroscopy, and I'll tell you why, why that's terrible later on. And then if not, then they do open surgery. And all those should not be options. So the orthopedist will say to them, there's nothing more you can do about it. No, what about seeing your chiropractor? Even a physical therapist, even a massage therapist or a regenerative orthopedist, okay? You need to learn to live with that. By the way, Probably one of the most failed surgeries of all the orthopedic surgeries are low backs. All right, 25 to 30 percent will do okay, and the other 70 percent fall into I don't know, get worse. And by the way, if they do have surgery on their low back, and you can tell them this before they have it, the only thing that will cure a failed low surgery, on a, a failed low back surgery, is another low back surgery. So they'll fuse L5, S1, and L4, L5, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they should run to the hills if a doctor says do that. Never play the sport again, take these pains, meds, and of course have surgery. And we just talked about the travesty of taking pain meds because they get into the cycle and get addicted. And so prolotherapy, many people have heard of prolotherapy, but it's defined, it's there in Webster's Dictionary. Heals weakened, torn, or damaged ligaments and tendons. I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit about it. I'll even show you a video. Basically, with the proliferant we use is dextrose. It's ubiquitous, it's found everywhere. Glucose, sugar water. Yes, we treat type two and even type one. We're not putting it intravascular. It won't affect their blood sugars, but it's just a common irritant. And actually, uh, we use concentrated. We use up to 25%. You can't go over that. It's way too caustic. It's very safe, stimulating, most commonly. And for the doctors in the audience, it's osmosis. So basically, it's a hypermolar solution. It's a very dense, dense solution. And you put it into a less dense cell, which is mainly water. It causes that cell to burst or causes lysis. And then the body sends chemotactic factors, chemical factors, white cells and platelets to that area to start the repair. It was discovered way back in the 40s and is still used today, and it's great. So again, it stimulates the tissue. Okay, it initiates a response, you get a regeneration, you get a healing of an area and a resolution. And guess what? You, did anyone ever hear the statement, treat the cause and not the effect? Yeah. And if you didn't, you need to go back to semester one in chiropractic school, right, Eric? Okay, the one you were sleeping in in the back. <laughs> that one. No, cause and not the effect. When they do like a meniscectomy in a low back, this is the most ridiculous thing in the world I've ever heard of because the meniscus is not the problem, it's the effect. Okay, excuse me, in a knee, a meniscus. A disc in a low back, same thing. The disc is not the cause of the problem, it is the effect. You treat the effect, that's all that goes away. So, stages of healing, again, we cause an irritation over one to three days when we inject. Right, Dr. Eric? One of my patients sitting right here. Okay, um, and then over f about 10 days, you start getting more irritation, then you get a proliferation or regeneration up to about 21 days.
prolotherapy patients I see about every three weeks. And then of course it continues to grow for up to a year. Now people have asked me, if it grows up to a year, why do I have to come back? Well, I have done nine years of volunteer work in Honduras. It's the poorest country in Central America. We teach doctors from around the US, the world, and from Honduras how to do these techniques to treat people. And it's a very labor-intensive society, so people line up for days and days. We work like crazy, 12, 14, 18 hours a day, but it's the most rewarding thing. I highly suggest volunteer work for anybody, especially in a third world country. But we only see those patients once a year. And I have my patients saying, you see them once a year, what, how, what do I have to come every three weeks? I go, all right. I'll see you twice, it'll take you two years, or I'll see you six times, it'll take you 16 weeks. Which one do you want to do? End of discussion. So that's why. So with that said and done, this little video here is going to tell you a little bit about what I do. Doctor, give me the news. We don't want to hear about a non-surgical cure that could get you back in action. Don't go away. I have a really active lifestyle. I play sports like football and track and dive and just everything that's fun and active. During a football game, I got tackled and my shoulder was in constant pain and from then on it just got progressively worse and worse until the doctor told me I needed surgery. And we're like, oh, surgery, no. There's gotta be something else we can do. My mom met Dr. Fields and he said that I would be a perfect subject for prolotherapy. The therapy is really easy. I go in and he injects me and it feels almost 100% after a day or two. And I'm extremely happy that I don't need surgery now that I can keep living my active lifestyle before I go to college next year. We have Shane here along with his physician, Dr. Peter Fields, who's both a medical doctor and a doctor of chiropractic medicine. He's from the Pacific Prolotherapy and Medical Wellness Center in Santa Monica, California. So thank you both for being here today. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Fields, what does prolotherapy mean? What, what is that? Okay, so prolotherapy is an injection technique for weakened, torn, damaged ligaments and tendons. Since they control joints, if you can get them to proliferate, that's where prolo comes from, you can get that joint to function well again. Okay. And uh, you're going to show us how it works? Sure. So basically, it is an injection technique. We have already marked Shane here and palpated him, pressed on the areas where we know his problems are, and there is some lidocaine pretreatment as an anesthetic. It's a very simple technique where we hold down the area, we go in, we inject. Very simple. The patient is not in a lot of pain. These are all numbed up, right? So He's all numbed up, good. and then the white blood cells go into that area, and the white blood cells and the platelets, they start to bring growth factors to that area, and it will get proliferated. Use a solution of dextrose? Yes, we use dextrose, which is glucose, sugar water. Basically, it causes a small microinflammation in that area. Basically, it's like we're setting off little fires in there, and the body's sending fire trucks with the repair to repair the weakened, torn, or damaged ligaments and tendons. You've actually had some great benefits from this, right? Yes, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing 95% better. I'm able to run track, play football, play basketball, and it's, it gets better with every treatment. And, and cool. the important take home here, you're having a great benefit from it. You know, anyone at home considering alternative treatment, just make sure you go to someone who, who knows what they're doing, do the research on your own. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And okay, very good. Two things there. You did, or if you didn't recognize, he introduced me as a medical physician and a doctor of chiropractic medicine. I went over with, this, with them hundreds of times, literally, how I want to be introduced. So now the day comes, it's filmed in front of a live audience, but it is shown two or three weeks later, so they could edit it technically, but it is a live audience. And so I'm waiting in the, way, in the dressing room, this, and then you come to the side of the stage, the show is going on, they're miking you, they're telling you this, is your hair in place, go to this mark on the floor, this, that, he'll introduce you as a medical physician and chiropractor. I said, no, doctor, and I'm looking at an intern, and he says, I don't know, this is what's written here. So they mic me, the red light goes on, you go on, or green light, whatever, to get you on stage. And I said to the guy who I talked to a lot, the pediatrician, the shorter guy, can you introduce me, da da da. And he said, I don't do the introduction, Travis does. So I, the guy in the scrubs, and it's his show basically. So I walked over to him and at that moment I had my, call it flash of brilliance. If anyone has treated anyone from Hollywood, you know that 
their egos are not this big. Their egos are beyond compare. And they do not like to have authority challenged. So I could have said, can you introduce me such and such? And he could have said yes or no. So I looked at him and said, hi, I'm Dr. Fields. Yes, I know I've read your bio. Are you allowed to introduce me as a medical doctor and a doctor of chiropractic medicine? He just looked at me and he said, this is my show. I'm allowed to do anything. And he turned and walked away. And then he introduced me. So that was my, I challenged his authority. So as soon as he did that, he was like, of course I can, I can do whatever I want. So, and by the way, we did have someone, uh, they, uh, they wanted someone around 50 years old and it had to be, it was before the Me Too, it had to be a woman and she had to have good legs and she had to speak well and et cetera, et cetera. And we had someone interviewed everything and two weeks before they said, hey, we want a shoulder. And I said, oh, now you want a shoulder and a knee. No, we only want a shoulder. Forget about the knee, but we interviewed her. You don't want to do it? We don't have to put you on the show. So we scrambled. I said, all right, I have someone who lives in San Diego. Fine, make sure he comes up here, gets pre-interviewed and brings his mother. And I said, he's 69 years old. His mother's been dead for 10 years. So we had to scramble and find that young kid, but he turned out really well, actually. So orthopedic surgeries in the United States, another one of those top five important slides. Look at this here. Every year, 40, greater than 40 million joint and spine surgeries, greater than 4 million total joint replacements, okay? Between 91 and 2010, they skyrocketed 162% per year, not per decade. So do the numbers, how it grew and grew and grew. I'll give you the numbers later, what it's worth, all right? Medicare says 60% are unnecessary. Medicare is very conservative. It's more like 70 or 80%. 50% of knee surgeries, uh, knee, total knee replacements will do okay. 50% so-so or worse. 40% of hips and 25% of shoulders. That means those are not good odds, okay? So that was in the Journal of Arthritis and Rheumatology. Why prolotherapy is better? Because it fixes the cause, not the effect. First semester, Eric, take that class again. <laughs> Allows the body to heal itself, avoids, now I got two Eric, so I gotta be careful here. Okay, I meant the other one. <laughs> Don't tell him when he comes back. Avoid surgery, no downtime, and it's permanent. Now, if they mess it up, fine. But if they don't, because remember, you have a weak and torn damaged ligament or tendon, and I'm getting it to repair itself. It's strong, it's vibrant. It's much better than it was before. So, and the results show that you get strengthening, pain relief, and it repairs itself. Statistics show that 80 to 85% get full pain relief, okay? 80 to 85% get increased range of motion. And the best thing is many people get both. And they're out there doing, whether it's playing with grandchildren, going for walks, skiing, hiking, pole vaulting, or doing other things, okay? So this is a surgical table. They have to make sure it's sterile, okay? Surgery research of the knee. Arthroscopic surgery does not improve the outcomes. That's the bottom line there. And as it says there, it is not correlated with arthritis or joint problems, okay? So meniscal damage is not correlated with arthritis and joint, meaning you could have no meniscal damage and you still have arthritis, they won't do anything. Or you could cut out part of that meniscus, but they still don't address how the arthritis formed, okay? This was in the New England Journal of Medicine. Prolotherapy, we're not funded by Big Pharma, but we have had some research and basically you get a reduction in pain and a greater range of motion than placebo. It's a no-brainer, Journal of Alternative Therapies. So. What does this all treat? The big question here, okay? Knees, hips, wrists, ankles, there isn't a joint in the body, okay? Now you see sports injuries, even bursitis, TMJs. Now you notice there's a blank, and there's two on the bottom, and I save this for the end, because if someone comes in for back or neck, if they have not seen a chiropractor, they are out the door. I do not treat anybody who's not tried chiropractic, because if chiropractic works, they don't need what I do. So most of the patients either come from chiropractors or I've had chiropractic, especially here in the LA area. But since I treat patients not only outside the LA area, but out of state and even out of country, if they come in, I say, you go to a chiropractor, you get it fixed, you don't need me if it's not working. Remember, if you're seeing someone three times a week, even four times, five times a week for all I care, but if you're doing this for months and months and months, you gotta start thinking outside the box going, wait a second, well, something's not happening here. What could it be? It could be 
a ligamentous or a tendinous problem. We're gonna talk about a knee injury, who said judo is not a contact sport. The reason I chose him, and you'll see in a second, is because he injured all three major ligaments in the knee, the ACL, the medial collateral, and the posterior collateral ligament, okay? He was non-weight bearing. He could not put his foot down on the ground and was on crutches and needed a brace to hold his knee up because he had no strength. Fortunately, he was in a major medical center and he agreed to have an MRI pre and post. Many people do not. How many people here have ever had an MRI? Okay, was this like the highlight of your entire life's career? Thank you. It was terrible. Going in that gong show and everything, granted there are some certain places that are better and stuff like that. So, but he agreed, okay? He had six treatments and he reported painless walking and running, mild discomfort with squatting, and he was back to full competition. But the most impressive part of his treatment was we knew he was better. We didn't need proof, but we got proof, okay? And you're gonna see it here. You don't have to read an MRI, I read it for you. The gray modeled area, that's the medial collateral ligament, because you can see the fibula on the right, so you know that's the left, or the medial side, and that is torn, gray modeled torn. Black is clear, and over here you see nice and black and clear. So this is a healed medial collateral ligament, definitive proof, same name and date and everything. There's no line of pictures, do not lie, okay? Here's his ACL, which goes forwards to backwards like that, or back to forwards, depending which way. And again, nice and clear and healed, okay? And remember, in judo, you need that ACL a lot because there's a lot of stop and go, a lot of stop. PCL, you only need it in sports like judo or wrestling and certain other sports where there is some sort of back motion. But again, there it is. It's a crazy angle in the back of the knee. And here it is again, even without marking it. So these are definitive proofs. Now we also have an ultrasound. This is a meniscus tear pre and post, okay? The person over here, you can see there's a nice uh, tear right there where the arrow points, and then another arrow down here pointing, and you can see those tears. And that white linear line, the red marker does not, my red beam doesn't work on here, that's the head of the humerus. And then you can see here, healed and healed. So it does work. Uh, this next young lady is going to tell you a story and you can guess where she went to school. Hi, I'm Krista McCain. I'm a former college athlete. I'm 30 years old and I had a tibial knee dislocation and was diagnosed with reflex sympathetic dystrophy. I found Dr. Fields through the LA Tri Club and came in suffering um, a lot of pain and stiffness in my right knee. I had formerly had five procedures and surgeries on my knee and about 27 femoral blocks to correct the nerve damage and this Monday I was able to play volleyball and football and run all day at the beach without even remembering that I had a bad knee and it's the first time in a really long time that I've been able to say that I feel like a whole healthy human being so I just want to say thank you Dr. Fields and all your lovely staff and it's great to be whole again. Not because I'm an SC fan, but who knows. Eight surgeries and 27 steroid shots. The first question is, who would ever do that to themselves? You might not have caught her name. Her name is Krista McCain. Her husband is the nephew of the late Senator John McCain of Arizona. If you know anything about politics, you do not become a senator without having a lot of money. And she said, I was just this scholarship athlete at SC, and the next thing I literally moved into royalty. So she was flown around the country, yes, on private planes, to the best, the brightest, and you follow, you go. Your uncle says this, your father-in-law says da, da, da. And finally one day she said to her husband, I don't care where, who, or what, there, no one's ever sticking another uh, surgical knife on me and giving me steroids, found me, and we got her better. So it can be done. And again, why she had so many, that was the explanation there. Um, this is a ruptured disc case, and I bring this one up because we do not inject into the disc, but the disc is the effect, it's not the cause. Now we got it, Eric? Both Eric's, good on the stand on. Um, this person was told you need emergency surgery, you're at risk of bladder and bowel dysfunction, all that stuff. You're at risk of, when they say that, you're almost this, you're going to be that. They don't know if it's going to be in three days, three weeks, or three months. And believe me, the day your bladder lets go, 
you still have time to do it. If you wait three, four, 48 or 72 hours, a different story. This person did not have it and said, I gotta get out of here, just give me some pain meds. It calmed down in a few days and this person decided to get treated without surgery. But first he had an MRI and it's very, very clear that the posterior longitudinal ligament is busted through, it's pressing on the spinal cord. No radiologist would read this any different. Okay, so after an MRI, after prolotherapy, you can see nice and clean and strong, and again, nice and clean, definitive proof. So we have it here, and you can see it. Now, the question is, if we didn't inject into that uh, disc, how did we get it to heal? Well, in regenerative orthopedics, because in, put it this way, if someone walks into your office, and says, first of all, it's always dangerous when they say, I know everything going on with me, and you're rolling your eyes. But they say, you go through the whole history, and you say, Doc, I know what's wrong with me. It's L3, L4 and L2 are fine. Would you just adjust L3 and touch nothing else? How many people here by a raise of hand would treat that patient? No one, zero, nada. Out the door, goodbye. Why? A, I'm the doctor, I make the diagnosis, and I'm gonna treat all your areas that are weak, not just where you have the pain. So we call that tensegrity, the tension everywhere. We treated all his weakened areas, as you can see highlighted by the red there. It helped stabilize the spine, and just like when you step on a donut and it pushes the jelly out, if you get that pressure to come off, you can get spontaneous resorption. It can happen. So shaving off that disc may take away the pressure for a little while, but it's gonna come back because you never treated the cause. And this happens over and over and over because they do either laminectomies or fusions, and the only way to solve that is to do another one and another one, okay? So with that said and done, here's someone who is one of us. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Yu. Um, I'm a chiropractor, and I've been having low back pain since I was 15 years old. Uh, I've tried everything. I've gotten chiropractic adjustments, massages, um, muscle therapy, and uh, there's always pain there. Turns out it was damaged ligaments. And um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to figure out where your pain comes from. Is it muscle? Is it ligaments? And most of the time there's some type of ligament issue, causes instability, chronic muscle tightness. Um, that's what I had. That's what a lot of low back pain sufferers have. And I discovered prolotherapy. Um, I've been seeing Dr. Fields for about seven visits now. Uh, I feel amazing. I thought I could never run again, surf again, um, work was killing me, and I'm doing all those things pain-free, right? Took seven visits, um, and you know, I feel great. So I really appreciate Dr. Fields, and I thank him so much for all his help. Um, I feel like I have my life back, and if you're suffering from not just low back pain, but any type of chronic pain, um, and you don't know where to go, and you don't know where to start, this is a great place to start. Um, you know, whether it's muscles, or ligaments, or disc problems, or joint issues, you might have all of those issues, okay? And don't neglect your ligaments, don't neglect your soft tissue. Um, and, you know, he, he'll definitely help you, and he's helped me, and he's helped numerous people, so you're in good hands. Couldn't surf, couldn't do anything else. He said, this is it, my whole career is gone. And somehow I lectured to him at a place like this. He found out about it and now he's one happy camper. So, with that said and done, now that we're having desserts, we're gonna talk about donuts, because everyone wants a donut. But actually these are not donuts, this is electron microscopy inside a vessel and those are platelets. And platelets do look like donuts, because they're kind of concave on both sides, okay? And we're gonna talk about PRP, which stands for platelet-rich plasma. How many people have heard of that? Now that's a key word, it's popular, it's out there and everything. And I'm gonna go over what it is and also tell you that not all PRP is created equal, okay? And I'll tell you why that is in a second, but it's taken from your own blood and the platelets are concentrated and injected into a damaged area. Now, why concentrate platelets? Because you can get seven to 10 times the concentration. And this is why they're not all created equal. There are many doctors out there who are just drawing the blood and injecting it back in. They're not even concentrating it. Or they're using a low level concentrator and getting three times instead of seven times or 10 times. 
we take the highest level one, it costs more, and, and also the way they're withdrawing blood. Everybody's had some blood drawn at a lab or a doctor's office or something like that. They draw it into a vacutainer, which is a vacuum tube that sucks the blood out, and it's three cc's. We're drawing 30 or 60 cc's into a syringe, which has no vacuum. You have to be careful how you draw it. You cannot break up the cells. Platelets are very fragile. So if someone's doing three times and they break a lot of cells, they may get one and a half times. We're getting 10 times. And remember, if we have three cc's of blood concentrated, and I have 10 times, that's 30. And if they have one and a half concentrated and they have three cc's of blood, they have four and a half. So from four and a half to 30 is a huge, huge gap. So not everybody doing PRP is doing it correctly. And many, many doctors out there, especially those who we said before people don't know are actually surgeons, and you can figure out that name, are doing it. They're giving one injection into the side of the knee where the meniscus is. And the meniscus is the effect, not the cause. And you can ask Dr. Goffnon because he learned it tonight. Okay. And that's what they're doing. But what about the medial collateral ligament, the lateral collateral ligament, the PES area, which I remember is the sartorius gracilis and semitendinosus, and all the other ligaments and tendons that stabilize the knee. They're not treating them. So they may be getting that meniscus to heal, but that's the effect. And then it'll come back and it'll come back. So I see this over and over again. And I'll tell you the truth, even with low backs, I had a pilot out of San Diego who came up because his back wasn't getting better and he had, quote, treatment on it. And when he got there, we asked him about it and he said, we said, tell me about the treatment. He said, well, they did the injection. And I go, the, as in one? Oh no, they did four or five on my low back. Basic anatomy, you have a spinous process, two pedicles, two transverse process. That's five areas, one vertebra. Five times five for all the lumbar, that's 25 areas right there. Each SI has four areas, that's another eight, you're up to 33. Iliolumbar ligament is another two, you're up to 35. Gluteus muscles, et cetera. We're doing 40 to 50 injections. When he told me he had four or five injections in his low back, I knew he didn't. They did something, but I don't know what they were doing. And he may have felt better for a couple of days or a week, but it's doomed for failure. So back to PRP, the biggest thing in PRP is platelet-derived growth factor. It has other growth factors in it. We're not really concerned with those. Epidermal, they're using it in hair. We only use platelet-derived growth factor for the joints, okay? And again, it depends how you concentrate it. This is a big fancy slide. You don't have to know a lot of stuff, but the biggest thing is platelets are components of blood. They do inc uh, include recruitment of stem cells if there are stem cells in the area. But the biggest thing is, and you can see over here, it causes tissue regeneration. Tissue regeneration, okay? And if you have it highly concentrated, and you'll see that on my next, or one or two slides down the road here. This is in the top five and maybe even the top one. If you don't have to know it. But basically on the left side, that's the lower concentration of platelets, whole blood or platelet poroplasma, as you can see as it's marked. If it goes above five to 10, you get an increase in its proliferation. So the cells actually not only are more concentrated, they're more potent. So when they have three times the concentration, not only are they less concentrated, less numbers, but you actually have less potency. And by the way, you have a million per cubic centimeter. So in one cubic centimeter, instead of having a million, we can get 10 million. And the problem is, is that if people come in to see any one of you and they say they've had it, it didn't work, they didn't. What kind of concentrator? Who drew it? Were they experienced in drawing it? What gauge needle did they use? Will they make sure they didn't damage it? They don't know that. And most of the time, the people doing it don't. And yes, there are doctors out there who do it three, four, five times a week. But they also do surgery 95% uh, of the rest of their time. That's all I'm doing. I'm doing this 8, 10, 12 times a day. So you go with the people who know what they're doing. Personally, I'm not going to a dentist who drills teeth 10% of the time. So why go to someone who does this as an adjunct? As a matter of fact, orthopedic surgeons will say, we'll try this. If it doesn't work, we'll do surgery. What kind of attitude is that? That means don't worry about it. I'll fix it later with surgery. But you can try this now because we can bill for it. Maybe they can't even. So why do you need to activate platelets? And again, the machine they use has to be a proper activator. It's got to be calibrated. It's got to be high quality. 
A regular centrifuge that spins blood, labs give it to you if you do enough blood draws. You do 10 blood draws a week, they'll just give it, they're a couple hundred dollars. The one I have costs us between eight to $10,000. It needs to be calibrated, computer synced and everything. That's a regular platelet. If you activate it, that's one platelet. Now think about it, you got a million of those guys and a million activated with all that growth factor. You got a lot of potential growth factor if it's activated properly. And also we use a high intensity ultraviolet light that even potentiates it more. Most people don't do that. That was an extra added cost, but we find that not only does it potentiate it, but platelets can cause an irritation factor and this actually dumbs down some of the irritation factors. So it's an extra added bonus to our patients. So again, what do we treat? Okay, now you see ligament, tendon, meniscus, and labrum I add on here. So if they have a meniscus or a labrum tear, it's very little, but the bottom line is moderate to severe ligament and tendon. So if that ligament and tendon is moderate to severe or as in the shoulder where you have four major ones, if two or three are injured, you may need that because you have so much there. Okay, meniscus tears in the knee, labrum, you have a labrum in your hip, a labrum in your shoulder, and smaller areas, wrists, ankles, Achilles tendon, patella tendon, things like that. So, a picture's worth a thousand words. Here's a picture here showing that's a tear in the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. 99.99% .99 of all orthopedic surgeons will say you need this taken out, there's not a lot of blood flow there. Or some will even say there's no blood flow. Now that's gotta be the biggest misnomer in medicine. If there was zero blood flow anywhere in your body, what would happen? It would die, I don't care, the tissue would die, end of discussion. So there's minimal blood flow, but guess what? We're putting platelets in, and where do platelets come from? Blood, so technically you're giving it more blood. So it doesn't have to be torn out, and you can see on here when the guy had it repaired, perfectly normal, no more white area, you know, one of the hardest areas they say to fix. Patella tendon, again, that's a very uh, smaller area. You can see the patella tendon is kind of chopped up over there, and over here you can see it's nice and clear and even, okay? Um, Achilles tendon tear, now this was a high grade tear. Most Achilles tendons tear off of the calcaneus, down by the bone. When it tears off near the muscle, okay, then that's a lot worse, okay? And so this person said it would give out severe pain, limited range of motion. And you can see here, high up off the bone, it's kind of a mottled gray area. It's not nice and clear and black like here. It's getting all mottled in there. I don't have my pointer. But post-treatment, minimal pain, normal range of motion, did not give out, no swelling or clicking, and you can see nice and clear and through. If this person had surgery, they would have had surgery, they would have booted them. The biggest problem with a boot anywhere in the body or a brace is you take it off and your arm is stuck like that. It takes them three months just to get it moving. It's usually nine months of rehab after surgery. This is about three to four months maximum and during that time they're not booted, they're walking, they're exercising. And by the way, that's not mine, but many years ago when I was working ER, I was playing a lot of tennis and I did tear my Achilles tendon. It, sounds, it feels like someone whacks you on the back of your leg with a board, I went down, I knew right away what was wrong. Had my PRP and boom, I was back, you know. Everyone in the court, oh, you gotta go have this fixed, et cetera, I said, you gotta be kidding me. So it does work, okay? This is a shoulder injury, rotator cuff. Um, we don't have a piece of paper here, but we may even, yes we do. Um, a lot of your patients will come in and say they have a full thickness tear, okay? so. And they, they don't say that to you. They say, Doc, I have a full tear. You can't, no one will be able to fix it. First of all, even that we can, because with a tear, unless it's 100%, if it's torn off completely off the origin and insertion, I can't gap air. I need 10% opposition, but even 10 or 15. But a full thickness tear goes like this, from top to bottom. So the origin and insertion are attached, but you can see from top to bottom. That is called a full thickness tear. These are extremely amenable to either PRP or prolotherapy. And that's what this person had, a full thickness tear. Did not want surgery. At first, he wanted only to do prolo, although we tried to get him 
We did it. We said, look, you want to advance yourself faster and quicker and really do it. So we did some more PRP, and here it is. Now, I call this a Stevie Wonder tear. The white line at the bottom there is the head of the humerus, and that is a huge hole. When you touched his shoulder over the deltoid, boom, you hit the bone. I mean, it was right there. Here we go. There's the normal tendon. There's the muscle below. Functioning well. I think it took him about a total of 16 weeks. With the shoulder surgery, which again is iffy whether it was going to work, they told him 9 to 12 months. So happy, happy camper. Okay? Here's a guy I'll tell you about his shoulders. My name is Wilbur. I'm age 65. I was a firefighter for many years. Unfortunately, I took a bad fall down a flight of stairs and I injured several parts of my body, including both of my shoulders. I, um, as a result, I had a significant um, reduction in my range of motion with both of my shoulders, uh, which really affected a lot of things in my life. My chiropractor worked on me, but was really not able to give me that range back. Uh, at, at a point recently, uh, my chiropractor sent me to Dr. Peter Fields with the recommendation that I look into prolotherapy which I had never heard of. Dr. Fields did a remarkable job of explaining prolotherapy to me, and we began treatment immediately on both shoulders. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you the changes. I had limited range in my ability to raise my arms. Now I can raise my arms entirely the way I did before I was injured. And now I'm doing core power yoga three, four, five times a week with great range of motion which is allowing me to, to maintain the flexibility that we all need as we grow older. Dr. Fields, I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you've done for me in changing my life. Thank you. Lancet, which is similar to the British Medical Journal, one of the two big journals in a lot of the study in England, are done there because Big Pharma stops it from here. They set out to find out what is the most, what are the top 10 overused surgeries in the world? And at the same time, the second arm of the study was, what are the 10 least successful surgeries? So the most overused surgery they found, without a doubt, was arthroscopic surgery of the knee. Arthroscopic, number one. Then they looked at the list of the least effective. What do you think came out to be number one? Arthroscopic surgery of the knee. Because basically they cut something out, Five or 10 years later, cut something out, then they tell you you need a new knee. Why? Because you've been cutting everything out. It does nothing to fix the cause of the problem, only takes away the effect. So, now we're gonna talk about stem cells. Everybody's heard of stem cells. Dolly the sheep, I don't do that. Doc, sorry, I have a question maybe. You wanna hold on, hey, because we're gonna get you mic'd and we'll answer that at the end. Thank you very much, but try to keep it in mind. Stem cell prolotherapy. We call it the healing trinity because you just don't need stem cells. You do need a scaffolding and growth factors. And I'll tell you again why all stem cell therapy, just like PRP, are not created equal. Okay. Um, someone can drive a car. I can drive a 68 Volkswagen and Dr. Goffnung, who now knows what cause and effect is about, drives it, we'll put him in a 2019 Lamborghini. You like that? All right, uh, Dr. Eric will give you the keys on the way out. So, uh, but anyway, but if we're talking amongst friends, hey, we both drive a car, that's it. But they're not, outside of that, there's nothing similar. So just because someone has PRP or stem cell does not mean it's the same thing, okay? And it usually is not, because they're doing partials and stuff, and I'll explain to you. So I do something called the gold standard. Now, there's a brochure you were given with an article written in a major medical magazine. Granted, I wrote the article about the gold standard. And most doctors I know are not doing it. I give lectures to chiropractors, to osteopaths, to MDs, whether it's local here in California or in Australia, Mexico City. And I get asked over and over similar questions that I know they're not doing the entire procedure. And I'll explain to you why. So that is a stem cell, a gold stem cell. You can see that. In the gold standard, we use four regenerative techniques and treat the outside. Remember, the outside is the effect. So number one was use bone marrow stem cells. 
And that's very important. And where you get the bone marrow and how you extract it and all those other processes, the same thing with PRP, the machinery and stuff. The biggest problem is that there are many people out there who, um, many people out there who are going into the shin. The shin is a lot easier to get to, but the shin is very hard. You most of the time have to use a drill and a drill causes splinters and the shin is very vascular. As you know, if you've ever whacked yourself and bled from the shin or caused the black and blue mark. So it's actually not a good source. The best place is the pelvis, in the back of the pelvis. It's very rich, it's very thick, it's difficult to get in there, but that's the best source of your stem cells. So we also get adipose or fat stem cells. Okay, and many, many, many doctors are not doing that. It's more difficult, they can't access it, it takes more time, etc. I, I didn't learn the technique. But the thing is, bone marrow stem cells give you what we say, <coughs> uh, not many lines, but very uh, deep. And fat give you many lines, um, and uh, give you less lines, excuse me, but depth. So now you're getting width and breadth. You're covering a lot more. Okay, we use the PRP, which have growth factor to get the stem cells to grow. And then of course we use dextrose pearl therapy to the outside. And if you don't treat the outside of the hip, the uh, knee, the shoulder, and yes, we do it on backs and necks, you're not gonna do the whole, treat the whole thing. You're only gonna be treating the effect, okay? Treating the outside. Now this other sl slide here just shows you Technically hemopoietic are blood, but you have mesenchymal, uh, which is the bone, and adipose, which is the fat, but the biggest thing, and I don't have my pointer, is that you can get cartilage to grow, okay? You need all these different types, drawn properly, processed properly, to get it to work, okay? And the key components of bone marrow, again, stem cells, the first thing, converts to osteoblasts, chondrocytes, the first thing up there, chondrocytes is cartilage. Same thing, this is bone marrow, why concentrate it? Because the number of progenerated available appears to be less than optimal unless you concentrate it. So some people pull it out and shove it back in and that's not the right way to do it. And this was studied in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, okay? Key components of fat. Again, fat has a, a lot less but covers a lot of depth. And again, hemopoietic lineage, you can get growth, growth, growth. So. And that is a fat cell, it looks like little owl eyes. And again, why adipose? It's an abundant and accessible source of adult stem cells and that can differentiate and you need them. And those who are not doing it, I don't know why they're not doing it. There may be financial reasons or they didn't learn the procedure. I will tell you there are many places out there when your patients say, well, I found someone else and he's doing this and that. Ask them how many times you have to have that done. On average, two, three, four, even, I've heard five times they have the procedure. I've done over 300 procedures, which is probably more than anyone else has done. Most docs have done maybe 50 or 60. I've never done any one twice. Not only do I do this, but I have them with two follow-ups with PRP, which is growth factor at six and 12 weeks. We used to make it optional, now it's required. And with that protocol, our success rate is excellent. So. Uh, that's why adipose cells. Again, this just shows you the biological properties of all these cells, and the biggest thing is tissue repair. Tissue repair. You can repair tissues. Okay, some people have asked about using other sources of stem cells, using cord blood and all this other stuff. First of all, cord blood and all that stuff does not have a lot of stem cells. It has a lot of growth factor. That's how come the baby grows. Second of all, it's not your stem cells. It's someone else's. And third of all, it's been frozen for a lot. And everybody in here knows who has an office that if you ask someone in your office to do something and they ask someone else who asks someone else, the likelihood that that third or fourth person is gonna do exactly what you said is not gonna work. It's lost in translation. That's a simple business, right? Think about it. When they draw it, when they do it in the hospital, it passes seven to 10 times in the hospital before it gets to the storage bank. Then it has to be stored for a long period of time and by the time you order it 10, 20, 30 years down the road, it's gone through another seven to 10. So 20 hands of taking care of this, mishandling, improper storage, and cross-contamination. There's so many problems, it's not even funny. The best stem cells you have are the ones that are located in your body. That's why when you cut yourself, you heal. 
we sleep at night, we repair ourselves. They, the best cells, stem cells for you are those stem cells, and there's zero cross-contamination. It's your cells. Okay, so we're gonna listen to this young guy tell you about himself. Hi, hi, my name is Robert. Um, 68 years old, and I recently had some stem cell, the stem cell procedure done by Dr. Fields uh, for my knee. Prior to that, um, I had orthoscopic surgery by my uh, orthopedic surgeon, who, um, and that was really not effective. Uh, no, no good came from that, and he suggested uh, Synbisc. I did that, and that was just a non-event. It was like it never happened. And I came to Dr. Fields uh, for the stem cell uh, procedure. Uh, I found out about Dr. Fields. I, I'm not quite sure how. Oh, because the surgeon wanted me to do a knee replacement. And I don't think they last too long. And I'm really active. I ski, I rollerblade, I surf. Uh, and I couldn't do any, but I couldn't even walk. Eight months ago, I was walking around uh, with a cane. And I couldn't get to the beach. Eight days ago, I got back from Nicaragua. I surfed for a week. I had a great time. I never thought of my knee. Uh, it was just like uh, I didn't have a problem. I couldn't even walk to my beach for two years. Now I go down carrying surfboards and spend a day in the ocean, and I plan to ski again this year. I never thought it would be this good, uh, and I highly recommend it over knee replacement, or at least try it before you do a knee replacement. And uh, I just can't thank Dr. Fields enough. I was skeptical, but I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Fields. Well, the best thing about that whole interview was he said the word Nicaragua, and one doctor out there picked up his eyes because he's going to go to Nicaragua and surf. Um, you heard him say, oh, I had this Synvisc. It was a non-event. Synvisc, Coralgin, these are lubricants. And they, are, they do absolutely nothing. You go to the mechanic, your, your car's making a weird noise. He says, he's, yeah, you know what, we can fix it. What is it? Oh, your axle's bad, you have to replace it. Great, can you do it tomorrow? Yeah, it'll be $7,500. Whoa, -hoo -hoo. let me go home and talk to the boss. A week later, he sees you in the market, he says, hey, did you take care of that axle? Yeah, cousin Vinny showed up. It's not from Jersey, he's from Connecticut. And, uh, <laughs> all right, and he puts some oil on it, doesn't make the sound anymore. And the guy goes, you gotta be kidding me. So it doesn't make the sound anymore. It's still broken. That's what Synvisc and Aralgin is. It does nothing. As a matter of fact, it's lubricated, so you keep pounding into it and making it worse and worse. And everyone who has it done either has no effect or it goes away within a week or two weeks or three weeks, and they end up having surgery anyway. He had the cortisone, the steroids, all that does is numb things out, and I'll tell you why that's a terrible thing. And here's a guy, now he's 70 years old, and yes, he surfs, he went skiing for a, all right, he's retired for a month up at Snowbird, and believe it or not, if you go to Malibu near Point Doom and you see an old guy rollerblading, that's Robert, Robert, Robert Comento. So, um, clinical applications, what do we do with this? Bone on bone, and this has got to be the biggest, I don't want to say lie, but misnomer pervade in medicine. Orthopedic surgeons will say to patients, you have bone on bone. First of all, if your bone was on bone, who's ever whacked their shin in the middle of the night getting up to get something out of the bathroom or whatever? You know what that hurts like, big time, okay? If they're not in that much pain, it can't be bone on bone. Second of all, if the bone was on the bone, they would walk like this, peg leg, they wouldn't bend it. But if they're bending it, they have to have some space. So it's almost bone on bone, it's going to be bone on bone, it could be bone on bone. But if they use those terms, no one's gonna have surgery, at least not right now. But when they hear bone on bone, oh my God, I'm finished, I'm done, I better have it done. So we hear this all the time and we see people come in, they, oh, you have bone on bone, and we look at it, we say, you know what, your flexion and extension is great. You know what, yes, the x-rays show decreased space, but you still have space there. Cartilage damage, you get a partlish cartilage damage, a lot of cartilage damage, or have your joint replaced. If they hear any of these three things, they are a candidate. Can we fix them? I don't know until we do the exam. I don't treat x-rays and MRIs. As I said, an MRI is a roadmap for a surgeon. I treat patients. So I do the history and physical, and then I look at the MRI and x-ray. I gave a lecture in Vegas a few years ago to over 400 doctors. I 
talked about a lot of things. I mentioned that in Turek, the textbook of orthopedic medicine, a big fat textbook written in the 50s and still used today, updated obviously, says that 80 to 85 percent of all orthopedic diagnosis come from history and physical. Afterwards, I had a crowd of about 40 doctors outside and this one doctor said, look, I'm a semi-retired orthopedic surgeon. I loved what you said, but I disagree with your percentages. So I knew right away, I humbled myself, I said, you mean history and physical? He goes, yes. And I said, well, I said 80 to 85. So I backed off. I said, what is this, like 60, 65%? He looked at me, I knew he was older. He said, Sonny boy, it's 100%. I tell my residents, stop ordering MRIs like cotton candy. Do history and physical, it'll tell you everything that's wrong with your patient. So don't, yes, it should back up what you found, but it shouldn't be your original thing. Many people, when they see an orthopedic surgeon, seven minutes in the office, boom, you need surgery, let's just go. They don't even examine it. So severe meniscus tears, if it's really chopped up, the word is macerated, used by radiologists. Large labral tears, big, big ones where they have other things going on. And osteonecrosis, or another word, avascular necrosis, they wanna scoop it out, we wanna put the stem cells in, get it to grow back. Okay, so listen to this young lady talk about herself. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm almost 70. And I'm here at Dr. Field's office. He, I, I had gone to two orthopedic surgeons, doctors, because my hip was giving me a lot of pain for quite a while. I couldn't sleep at night and sometimes I'd be limping. It was really painful. And they both said I would need a hip replacement. And I didn't like that idea, and a friend of mine then started telling me about stem cell treatment. So I researched it, and I actually interviewed a couple people um, who did stem cells, but they weren't real doctors and something funny about them. And then I found Dr. Fields, who's a doctor right here in Santa Monica. Everything was great. So I, I was courageous and did the stem cells and I'm so happy because I have my hip back. I don't have pain anymore. It takes maybe three months to start kicking in, to start really kicking in, but I was limping, etc. and now I don't. Now I can go walking, I go to my ballet class and I'm, I have a camper because of Dr. Field's stem cells. Look, ballet at 70, that's pretty impressive right there. By the way, once they do a testimonial, she did that three years ago, she's still 70, almost 70, so she's very happy about that. So this is joint replacement complications. We'll kind of wind this down in a few minutes here and let you ask some questions. Everyone needs to know that. Look, that's 36 billion just on knees. It's a huge, huge money maker. Money for the doctor, for the hospital, for the device, for the anesthesiologist. I've had patients come in and say, I have surgery in a week. Okay, they can cancel it. Many people have heard someone having a surgery, oh, it got canceled, Aunt Mary's da 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 got canceled because the surgeon had a family emergency. The patient can be too. You could be wheeled down, they're about to gas you, they're gonna tell you insurance doesn't pay for it, that's a bunch of malarkey, and you can get up and say, I'm walking out of here. They'll be very upset and try to convince you because you're a money slot. In those two hours, they figured out how much money they were gonna make. So it is, most orthopedic surgeries are elective. The rate of surgeries doubled between 2000 and 2010. We talked about these are the risks and patients need to know this beforehand. Infection, okay? Infection is the worst thing and I'm gonna tell a little story here quickly. About two weeks ago, I have a patient care coordinator. She handles the calls from patients because in my office, it can be five minutes, it can be 30 minutes. They really need to know what I do. But somehow I heard what the message was and it said, someone so is calling, they have surgery scheduled next week to have their knee replaced. And I'm thinking, why are they calling me if they've got it already planned? I mean, what's up here? So I was scared. Get on the phone, I'm 64 years old, live in San Clemente, goes over the history and everything. I'm still wondering why. So I said, so you have surgery a week from this Thursday? Yes, and why are you calling us? Oh, my cousin, who's a year older than me, 65, has Kaiser Insurance, they decided to replace her knee about a month ago. But she got a bad, bad infection. 
osteomyelitis. Bone infections are terrible. And if you can't cure bone infection, there's only one way to stop it. So she said, two days ago, they cut her leg off. And she said, this is not gonna happen to me. Can I cancel my surgery? I said, it's in 12 days. You can cancel it in 12 hours, in 12 minutes. She's coming up from San Clemente. We're gonna look at her MRI and x-rays after the exam. But infection is terrible and it happens. Generally in the United States, any surgery done in a hospital is a seven to 15% uh, rate. And by the way, when I do stem cell, we don't use general anesthesia. We give them some oral medicines, and then we use local, local, like at a dentist. There are side effects to anesthesia. About four years ago, Joan Rivers passed away from the complications of anesthesia. You don't read about it because they signed papers, gave the daughter supposedly over 50 million and just said, sign this and don't ever talk about it. But they had complications with her anesthesia. And anybody over 60 or even under 60 is definitely concerned. The device can fail. Another story, a patient of mine, uh, engineer, lives in Palos Verdes, 71 years old, they replaced his knee. He kept complaining in the hospital of pain and pain and pain, no, just wait a couple of days, couple of days, oh my God, you're bleeding into your wound, okay? The device is gonna rot out now, so they had to take the device out and he had to lay there for a week while he healed, <coughs> meaning no knee, now, no knee, he couldn't bend or stand, but his leg is attached by ligaments and tendons, which they don't treat. And then they put a new one in, and when he went to physical therapy, it was about two weeks later, and they told him, you know what? If you don't get down here within 24 to 72 hours of your initial surgery, it's gonna be tough. He never gained full extension. When you walk, you have to extend your leg. Your back leg extends, so his isn't, so he has that little limp. 79, he's still working as an engineer at one of the big aerospace companies. Knee is hurting him, he's not thinking, goes to the doctor, he said, well, looks like you need the other one replaced. He just looked at him and said, you buy the gun, you buy the bullets, and I'll pull the trigger. Not only did I help him with that knee, but the other one which had pain, which was mostly ligaments and tendons, it certainly wasn't the device, I actually helped him get, uh, solve those problems. So I do take people post-surgical. You can have increased pain, which is terrible, and by the way, that's why surgeons say, wait till you're in a lot of pain, then come back and talk to me. Has anyone ever heard that? Wait till you're in a lot of pain, because if you're, seven out of 10, and the surgery puts you eight out of 10, eh, you're a little upset. But if you're three out of 10, and the surgery puts you eight out of 10, you are one unhappy camper. So they want you in so much pain that it really can't get any worse, okay? And also, in regenerative orthopedics, we'd rather rebuild something when it's 25% worn down as opposed to 75% worn down. They don't care, they're cutting the whole thing out, they'll wait till the whole joint is destroyed. Wound dehiscence, wound opening up, that's inherent problems right there. Some patients with surgery had worse pain. If you do not have surgery, you could always have the surgery later. That was a study on knee replacement, and that was the lead author who in the middle of the study said, oh my God, they don't even need to have this surgery. They could always do it later. Then of course, is this statement up here, which is surgery, I'm sorry, surgery can always be done, but never undone. And that was said by some crazy doctor out there. So. With that said and done, um, we're just gonna listen to one more here of a shoulder. Hi, my name's Jeff Roberts, I'm 66 years old. I had stem cell uh, three years ago by Dr. Peter Fields. Um, I came from New Mexico, my surgeon suggested that I just live with the pain I had and he didn't want to do uh, shoulder replacement. And my family doctor, doctor saw Dr. Peter Fields a seminar in Las Vegas and recommended I come out. So three years ago I had the stem cell in my right shoulder uh, where I had tremendous pain. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't sit up, I couldn't lay on my either side, I couldn't lay on my back. Um, after the stem cell I have no pain. I have 100% movement in my shoulder um, and it's the best thing I ever did. So Cortisone, everybody needs to know this, it's not the same. Cortisone does pain relief, okay? And should not be given more than three times. Pro athletes have it 30, 40, 50 times, eat up their joints. It weakens tendons, think about that. Okay, it destroys cartilage. It increases bleeding. It weakens ligaments, it decreases bone mass, raises blood pressure, I can go on and on and on. It's a terrible, terrible drug, but it's so overused. It's a temporary effect. 
It does not treat the cause, only the effect, all right? And so regeneration is very safe. It's minimal risks, far less than taking these drugs for your whole life, of course, and avoids all those surgical complications we talked about. So you can do regenerate or you can do surgery. More conservative, less outcome, and they're elective. Joint surgeries and back surgeries can be decided at the last minute. You don't have to always do it if you find out an alternative. They're not always successful. It avoids the complications we talked about. And of course, it is irreversible. Once done, it can never be undone. So regenerative orthopedics is cutting edge and it decreases pain, healing naturally. Pain is treated, not just covered up. With that said and done, I'm just gonna go to one last MRI and this will be the last thing. Not big on MRIs, but this person had severe pain, greater than six months. Shooting pain down his leg three, four times a night, couldn't sleep, saw every kind of chiropractor, acupuncturist, massage, didn't know what to do anymore, so he did have an MRI, showed it to three neurosurgeons, by the way, who are very conservative. Orthopedists are much more aggressive with surgeries. Neurosurgeons are much more. We have a head nodding in the back there. And so, um, anyway, he had desiccated discs, dried out discs, nine millimeter protrusion. I've treated as big as 12, but this nine is still pretty big, anything over six. Spondylolisthesis, L5 on S1, grade one and a half. Grade four is the most you can have, but that's transection of the cord, you're a goner. So three, one and a half is halfway home to three. Okay, displaced nerve roots bilaterally, spondylysis, many different areas, and neuroforaminal stenosis. This person was in big trouble and had, was symptomatic for six months. Okay, what he was told, if he'd had no surgery, he would not do exercise, and this was not a happy camper. This person now is very happy, pain-free, did regenerative orthopedics, okay? Maintenance therapy, which includes chiropractic care and these other two things. And this person has done 10 full Ironmen, which is this crazy, crazy distance. And I know this person very well because that was my MRI. And this is me in Maryland last year at Ironman Maryland competing my 10th Ironman triathlon. When I finished, a lot on me hurt, you name a joint, but my back felt great. So I know it works. It absolutely works. It can save your patients. They will thank you for the rest of your careers because they walked in there thinking, that's it, I'm done. There's nothing else I can do. And you're saying, no, 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 read this brochure. Go talk to this doctor. I'll call the doctor and you and I can do it together. I've done that too, all right? Patients come from this area, from San Clemente, San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle. Phoenix, New Mexico, Florida, Mexico, Germany, Korea, it doesn't matter where because when they're seeking the right kind of care, they will do anything. I want to thank everybody very much. Get out, it's a big, beautiful world. About four, eight weeks ago, my bucket list was to climb Kilimanjaro. Yes, with that bad back, but it did great. 19,341 feet, it was the greatest experience of my life. I was up there and it was cold, but it was beautiful. So get out and travel, and now I'll take a whole bunch of questions. Are you doing Prolo with all of them? Is that part of the treatment? Because I've heard him talked about separately, but you're including all of them. Absolutely. So this is a great question. I thank you very much. And by the way, he is a patient of mine. And so he can attest to the benefits. If someone just needs Prolo, someone comes in and says they need PRP, but we decide Prolo can treat them. We will just do Prolo therapy on them. There's no reason to do something excessive. Granted, PRP might fix them, but they can get better with something that is just as effective and obviously cost less. And the example I use basically is you could have ants in the kitchen and you could put down some boric acid or some little ant traps and kill 95% of them, but you could also roll in a hand grenade and kill 100% of them, but one is overkill. So people even say I need stem cell, I need less. We will tell people what we think is the appropriate. When we do PRP on someone, because we get a smaller amount, like a meniscus in a knee, we will put the PRP inside the knee and then do prolo to the outside. You cannot do that much PRP. When someone gets stem cell, then they're getting the PRP to activate the stem cells and the prolo to treat the outside. So what we call that is comprehensive regenerative orthopedics. You will get everything as you bump up your levels. Does that answer your question? Very good. Next question. Uh, you want to hand that over here? Just so I can describe to my patients how you concentrate 
uh, the platelet cells and PRP. Could you just describe how your office does it better so I can just kind of give it? Very good question, how we concentrate. First of all, we have a nurse who's been drawing blood for over 20 years, and they have to know what they're doing, how they're doing, be familiar with needles, drawing into syringes, not most of them, just draw into vacutainers. So he knows that. Number two, as we said, he can find a vein in the dark. Uh, know the rate, how to draw it. Okay, then once it's drawn, how to handle it, how to transfer it into the appropriate tubes, use the concentrator we have, which is the highest end concentrator made by a company called Emsite. And then of course, we're using the uh, ultraviolet light to even activate or potentiate the cells more. So all that together will make for a good draw. But there's so many steps along the way. Where can you just explain the difference between a centrifuge and your concentrator? All right, well, a centrifuge just spins things round and round. It'd be a little difficult to explain the entire thing, but you have to realize your blood has platelets in it, it has plasma in it, it has white cells, and these are special uh, centrifuges when they spin, have to go at different speeds, and then have to be able to tip, so to tip the stuff out, get the layer on top, tip it out, layer on top, tip it out. I mean, that is a very, very basic thing for a $10,000 machine, but in a nutshell, it, it's able to extract out a normal centrifuge will just separate liquids and that's it, but it won't get anything out. So when we get it out, there's a bucket in there, and some has the excess and some has the concentrate. And how do you prevent it, the platelets from breaking up? Okay, how you handle it, the machine, how it accelerates, the smoothness of the machine, et cetera, et cetera. It's like if you carried a glass of water in an Volks, old beat up Volkswagen with no shocks, it's going all over the place. But you put that in back of a Bentley and you got no problem. All right. Next question. Is this, are these uh, cash services or do you take insurance? Well, first of all, uh, I have my assistant here, Jessica, and she can answer some more questions for you. But yeah, basically everything we do is a fee for service. It's a cash practice. We don't trust insurance. We don't bill insurance. If people want to get fixed and avoid surgery, they'll pay for it. And that's the bottom line. And there's various prices for different things and stuff like that. Uh, Dr. Yeah, go ahead. Regarding, regarding the, the current science and research on all of these, what is the difference between Prolo, PRP, stem cell? I know stem cell is still fairly new, a newcomer, but you know, what do we know about it now that's been studied? All right, so yes, more and more studies are being done. Prolo's been around for the longest, since the 40s, PRP in the 70s and 80s, discovered by some dentists, and stem cells, well, technically stem cells, Dolly the Sheep was around years ago, but in orthopedics. So with each year, literally months and stuff, new studies, new research is being done, but we know the benefits of it because we see it in the testimonials, we see it in people that are running and biking and lifting their arms and doing stuff, so you can get growth. And there is, if you go to my website, drfields.com, you can find some of the more current research and things like that. Go ahead, this young lady over Dr. here. Dr. Fields, thank you. I don't know if you remember me. I've talked to you several times many years ago. Uh, Dr. Kerry Pratt. Yes. I had a tear in my TFCC, had a big work comp case, and uh, you and I discussed this, so I remember very clearly. And back then, I think, I think we were talking about PRP. It's been some time. But now, um, I have major, a lot, this is personal, really. <laughs> I have a lot of other major issues going on with my body's tears that I keep, that keep coming back, and now I'm having back pain. I know I look 25, but I'm not. So, yeah, okay. So can you, you talked about a lot of stuff with joints and discs, but do you deal with tears? Oh, all the time. No, this is, yeah, we deal with tears and ligaments, tendons. That's the majority of what we do. Things are torn. They're weakened, torn, or damaged. I should have said that over and over. Weakened, torn, or damaged. And by the way, we see, we even do preventative. About two or three years ago, I did an Ironman down in Cozumel, and I came back. I have a physician's assistant, and I said, I want you to do some PRP on my knees. She goes, do your knees hurt? And I go, not really, but I don't want them to hurt. I know I just ran a marathon after biking 112 miles, so... Let's just do it in there to strengthen it up. Because in orthopedics, pain is a problem. There's a no-brainer. But the absence of pain doesn't mean the absence of a problem. As chiropractors, we all know that. People come in, you say, your pelvis is on level, L5 is rotated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
oh, I feel great, doesn't matter. We gotta fix that, because sooner or later when that comes on, you're really gonna be hurting. So yes, we work on chronic problems a lot more than acute. Many, many problems are acute exacerbations of a chronic problem. Um, someone played soccer in high school or basketball or wrestling. Now it's 20, 30 years later. Their body still has a memory for that. They go to uh, reach a bottle of uh, soda or juice out of the refrigerator. They can't even move their arm anymore. I don't understand this. I was bench pressing yesterday. They went over the line of pain. So if you want, give us a call. We'll talk to you and we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, so when you talk about the body's uh, innate intelligence and the ability to heal itself, in the absence of neurological deficit, frank atrophy, um, other issues that plague a patient, when they come to all of us and say, I can't take it anymore, it could be an acute injury. With prolotherapy, and I've had so many patients go, we've done it in my clinics, prolotherapy, referred off for stem cell. What portion of the body's own ability to constantly heal itself comes into your play with the prolotherapy? In other words, if you did nothing, and we're talking about symptomatic um, reporting from the patient, in other words, how are you feeling, zero to 10, day one, day two, one week, one month, three months, where do you actually feel that from a regenerative standpoint um, the prolotherapy, which we've been using for years, and on the stem cell therapy, which I've referred out for, which is with mixed results, how do you draw that line on doing nothing from a, a symptomatic standpoint of the patient saying to you, and I've done it many, many times over the last 35 years, where I say, give me 90 days, give me 90 days, cancel your surgery, without neurological deficit, without frank atrophy, without atrophy of, 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 of a muscle, compartment. What do you feel that what you do really has um, efficacy and, and true outcome study? Because it really comes down to an outcome study, in my opinion. First of all, it's a great question. It's a multi-part question there, but yes, certainly you can do nothing and sit around and wait and wait. If you're just looking for symptomatic relief, you know, the pain in the knee may go away, but the torn meniscus will still be there and you're going to be doing damage and damage. It has been shown that if you do nothing, or just do physical therapy or massage, that meniscus is always going to stay torn. Very, very few are going to heal up on their own. The body may have an innate intelligence, but to heal a really severely torn meniscus or a labrum, especially when there's pressure and it's lower body and it's weight bearing, it's not going to happen. How long does someone take to get better? That's a great question. We have some people, I have had, usually with PRP we say three to four treatments, about every four weeks, but I've had people get two and swear by it, they're doing everything, their orthopedic tests are negative, their neurological tests are negative. So everybody is different and every body is different. But we know that again, that just letting them go, because unfortunately there's some people who choose not to do it and then they come back to us. I should have done it. Well, right, it's okay, but I mean, when I say innate intelligence, I went to Nashville in Chicago, where we never even heard of the word chiropractic. <clears throat> For five years, I was there, yeah. So when you talk about a functional change versus a antidotal um, patient saying to you, I feel better, my point is that can you really see real benefits that are proven um, that would be radiologic or on MRI, which well, again is a contrast to shadows. Well, as I said, we have proved it with radiological stuff. We've proved it with orthopedic and neurological testing. Like, like and not that. everybody has that, but the benefits are there. And it's, if you go to my website, drfields.com, one of the biggest things I promote are testimonials from patients. Video and written, a lot of video now, because people are talking, they're running marathons, they're doing this. I thought I needed surgery, I thought I needed this chopped off and that chopped off. So if you have someone who orthopedic and neurologically are testing out negative and symptomatically they're doing great, and I'm not to say that any one of those stem cell patients so my like Robert who spoke up there, he says, you know, if I have to come here once or twice a year for the rest of my life and get some PRP to bounce it back up again, it's a no-brainer. Had they chopped off my knee, who knows what would have happened to me. Thank you. Thank you for having the nerve to, you know, being a person who went to medical school after chiropractic school. It takes a lot of, it takes a lot of intestinal fortitude to call a spade a spade. And I've been in practice 35 years. And I've had a very diversified practice with MDs in there, deep, uh, PTs, acupuncturists, homeopaths, naturopaths, everything you can think of. And the bottom line is that it's hard to stand up against the 
the, the machine of greed and, and ego. Well, and we all know as chiropractors that you know we have to all kind of get together and have to promote the fact that we are the answer, at least on a interventional standpoint, to what this whole country needs. We are the only doctors who really are on the side of of prevention and interventions, and there's no shame in saying that. I just think most chiropractors, you know, we've just been beaten down by 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 media and by old antiquated thinking that no one has the balls and the nerves anymore to really come out and say, we are the doctors you should see first. Well, thank you very much. I pre yes, nice and as I said, I am very pro-chiropractic. Uh, we're gonna wrap this up and say thank you. I will tell you that I'm allowed to give, I give 10% discount to all professionals, to MDs, osteopaths, physical therapists, even acupuncturists, massage therapists. Uh, Dr. Goffnung will not allow me to give 10% to this group. So I'm giving 20%, okay? Actually, I give 20% to all chiropractors because this is where I came from. This is what I believe in. If I can help you with your problems, but certainly any of your patients who will thank you for years and years to come because you open their eyes. And if you ever have any questions and you call, I take every call, right, Dr. Eric? Mm -hmm. From chiropractors, I will sit and talk to you and help you explain. If you wanna get them on the phone, we can do that. We do phone. I have patients, as I said, this gentleman from New Mexico, we did him over the phone. He came in, we confirmed it. So I want to thank everybody very, very much. Take care.